This is an intubation scenario for a COVID patient in the ICU. First, you will have a huddle outside of the room with members of the team, or you will confirm availability of necessary personal protective equipment, perform donning per protocol, confirm the presence of a red biohazard bin. In your pre-intubation huddle, you'll also make sure you identify the patient, their allergies, any significant past medical history, airway history, and the induction meds you will use. Remind uh, the team that you'll need an OG tube in the room to place after intubation. Review if the patient has any contraindications to succinylcholine, your planned LMA and endotracheal tube sizes. Remind the respiratory th therapist that the end tidal CO2 needs to be calibrated and ready to be used immediately after intubation. Identify the individuals and their roles during intubation. The team should minimize proximity to the patient and remain over six feet away whenever possible. The core team in the room will be an attending anesthesiologist, a respiratory therapist, and a ICU nurse. There will also be a respiratory therapist outside of the room as well. Confirm that the patient has monitors connected and position the patient for intubation. Confirm the availability of your medications, and including rescue medications. Strongly consider having your sedation and uh, presser infusions set up by the ICU nurse ahead of time. Um, and consider giving glycopyrrolate to dry secretions. Confirm the presence of your airway equipment inside the room. You should have your video laryngoscope, an ET tube, a bougie, an LMA, and an oral airway, as well as an AMBU bag. This will come from the tackle box. Outside of the room, you will keep the tackle box outside and have extra rescue medications. Prepare all your equipment and ensure that it is within easy reach. Remember, the RN and respiratory therapist will be greater than six feet away, so ideally should not have to be nearby the bed to hand you things. You need to make sure you have a stiletted endotracheal tube with the cuff lubricated, a 10 cc syringe attached to the cuff balloon. Check your LMA with a 20 cc syringe attached to the cuff balloon. Appropriately, appropriately sized oral airway, a bougie that's opened, your video laryngoscope blade. Make sure the screen is turned on and the scope is plugged in. Check your yank hour suction is on and within reach. Your induction and rescue medications are within reach near your free flowing IV, which is also within reach. The ventilator circuit should be nearby. Confirm that the necessary components are there with a respiratory therapist. You need to check that a HEPA filter is on the expiratory limb that there is inline infrared capnography, which has been calibrated already by the RT. There's closed inline suctioning attached. The ETT securement tie is in place on the end of the circuit and the comfit tube is secured behind the patient's head. The OG tube with lube should also be provided by the ICU nurse. There should also be an AMBU bag with HEPA filter connected to oxygen but not on. This is a simulation of an ICU intubation of a COVID positive patient. The three people in the room would be an attending anesthesiologist, a respiratory therapist, and an ICU nurse. Everyone would be in strict isolation PPE. For the purposes of demonstration, we will not be wearing the PPE. Set the blood pressure cuff to cycle every minute and turn on volume for pulse oximetry. You will pre-oxygenate. If using a non-rebreather, make sure that the straps are tightened and you have a snug fit before pre-oxygenating and turn on your flows to 15 liters per minute. Once you have adequate pre-oxygenation, initiate your RSI, making sure you wait for paralytic to take effect to avoid patient movement or coughing. When you are ready to remove the mask, turn off your flows before completely removing the mask from the patient's face. Perform video laryngoscopy and pass the endotracheal tube to an appropriate depth, taking care to avoid main stem intubation. You'll remove the blade and quickly remove the stylet, inflate the cuff and connect the circuit. Turn the vent on. The respiratory therapist will turn on the ventilator and will communicate if they, when they see end tidal CO2. We have end tidal CO2. Sounds good. When you are ready, first place the nasal cannula around the patient's head. Do not yet connect it to your oxygen flow and do not disconnect the vent in order to put on the nasal cannula.
Next, perform any yank hour or inline suctioning. Loosen this securement on the tube. Ensure that you have a syringe attached to deflate your endotracheal tube cuff and that is, it is within accessible reach of your hands. Do not yet deflate the cuff. Right. Once you have confirmed that you have the cap for your circuit available, you may place the plastic drape over the patient's face. The goal of this clear plastic drape is to catch any secretions or any coughing that may occur to protect you from the patient's secretions during extubation. All right. When ready for extubation, you will turn the vent on standby. Ventilators on standby. First, disconnect the circuit behind the capnography line, between the capnography line and the corrugated tubing. Right. Once it's disconnected, you will pull the circuit away and quickly cap it once any secretions have been caught on that chuck. Next, you will deflate the syringe, trying to keep it away from the patient's face as much as possible. And then once ready, you will extubate the patient and pull the endotracheal tube. Keep the drape over the patient's face. It's okay if the endotracheal tube and the corrugation are over the chuck as this should catch any secretions that are there. Once you've ensured that the patient is no longer coughing, you may pull away the drape and the chuck together, keeping the contaminated side in and dispose of this in the trash. You will then turn on the auxiliary oxygen for the nasal cannula.